guys, it's me again, back here in the makeup room. It feels so good to be back, although I did love vacation in Destin over the past week. It was so wonderful. But you know what they say, home is where your makeup is. So this is where most of my makeup is. And what's going on with the cottonwood tree back here? I mean, it got leaves while I was gone. But I am excited to pass along in this video my favorites for the month of April. I also have some things that I wouldn't call them full-on fails, maybe, to be most accurate. But there are things in particular that I think some people really, really love, and I just can't get on that level with them. Things that I just don't think are that great. First off, let's just talk lip color for a second. I know I've been a broken record about these L'Oreal Color Riche Shine lip colors, but I love them. They're everything. They're the lipstick application. They're the gloss-like shine. They're the balm-like comfort. They are such a great, like, multitasking lip product, and I think Vacation made me fall in love with them even more, and the shade that I was wearing the most is called Burnished Blush, and so it's just this gorgeous soft pink. I think it's so spring-friendly. It's pink, but it's not too pink, you know? I think it's a safe enough pink for people who maybe don't wear a lot of pinks on their lips. Also, let me mention a hair thing that's kind of random here. I got this from Target. They had kind of like a try-me section at the end of one of the makeup aisles, and it wasn't just like hair care, but also skincare and little makeup things too, and I had picked up this Carol's Daughter Black Vanilla Leave-In Conditioner. I had this maybe a few weeks before I went on vacation. This smells so freaking good. Best smelling hair leave-in type treatment by far. Oh. oh, if you like vanilla, I mean, it's like a rich vanilla type scent. And I am one who is always kind of trying to guard against my hair getting too oily. I'm really like careful about that at the scalp, but the ends of my hair, you know, can still get rather dry, especially when you're swimming, just being outdoors a lot. I feel like the hair can dry out even faster. And this is a great little thing to spray in maybe after you've been in the water and you've showered off and you just want something to, number one, help your comb through your hair a little bit better. I've used this on Belle as well. Works really nicely. It's it's a leave-in conditioner. It helps with detangling a bit, but ultimately I think it kind of restores the moisture and softness. On top of it all, it smells great. I'm sure they sell this in a bigger size. This is just the two ounce size, so carry on friendly if you're traveling or you just want to try something new and, and not get a huge size of it. This is so good. And anything that helps you get through a kid's hair faster. You know, Belle has long hair and it's really fine like mine. It's tangle prone and she tries to tough it out like when I'm going through it if we hit kind of a snarl. Her eyes will just like well up immediately. It's like hitting a nerve or something. So that helps a lot. Now you may not be able to tell too much on camera because my camera always is making me a little bit lighter than I truly am. I wonder how much my sunburn shows. Oh, there you can see some tan line. I freaking burned while I was on vacation. We were there for a week and it was on Wednesday and I'd spent a lot of time. Well, first off, I think at the beach that day, but also by the pool. And we had this spray thing of copper tone sunscreen. It's like just a copper tone kids SPF 50, but you know, kids sunscreen can be used on adults. It really doesn't matter. I don't think that was the thing that was an issue here. I think it was just the staying power of the sunscreen, even though I reapplied, even though yes, I did go on and rub it in even after I sprayed it on. It was just too lightweight. It could not hang. It was just not doing the job. And I don't typically sunburn that much or that easily. But now several days later, as you can see, this is kind of dying down, turning into a bit more of a tan, but I was definitely burned on top of my legs, even my stomach. Now my face did not burn, and I did have this um, absolutely ageless leave-on day mask lotion. This isn't particularly a favorite. I haven't been using it that long, but it's got SPF 30 in it. And then on top of that, I had the Aveeno Baby Sunscreen. Now that stuff, I should have thought more about this because I have used and loved the Aveeno Baby Sunscreen for a couple years now. I think it's probably been featured in a past favorites video. And that on my face, I mean, I didn't burn at all. Maybe my nose got just a little bit red, but hardly anything. And it was on the girls, you know, sensitive baby skin, and they didn't burn at all. So the Aveeno Baby is a huge thumbs up. I love that stuff. The Copper Tone Spray-On, like just in general, I am definitely going to be backing away from the spray-on sunscreen. I think the reason why I've used them quite a bit in the past is that they've just, they've gotten me through short situations where I was outside for a little while and it was enough, but the floor to sun, I think number one is a different story. And I think you just really have to find something that's going to stay on your skin. I think the staying power of the Aveeno is really fantastic. But in recovery from the sunscreen, I had a couple of these things on hand. This is a mini size of the Kapari Coconut Melt, and I really did like this. And this under ingredients, it says it is just 
coconut oil, organic coconut oil. So maybe I'm not necessarily saying like you have to have this because there are plenty of coconut oils out there. But I put this on pretty much head to toe. I also did use some of the coconut face cream post sunburn. I used quite a bit of this on my face. And they both worked really well. I thought they felt very soothing on the sunburn. They moisturized my skin very deeply. I know aloe is always a good choice after a sunburn as well because it can feel really cooling. It just give you kind of an immediate cool down effect to the skin, but it's not always super deeply hydrating. So I found that this Kapari really, really was. I have enjoyed a lot of different things from this brand, actually. And it was nice to have this small size of the coconut melt. I didn't have to go throw in a full-on jar in my, you know, makeup tote. Something I feel like I always come back to in the summer months as a favorite or a rediscovered favorite is my It Cosmetics CC Plus Illumination. This is in medium, and part of it might be the fact that I think the medium shade, when I get a little color in my skin, the medium shade of this stuff is so, so so perfect. And the illumination version of this can be a little intense at times, you know? They're not playing with that concept. I mean, it is very, very illuminating. Now you're seeing it on my skin with a little powder on top and, you know, a little concealer as well. But there is something, I think, very naturally beautiful about this when you're doing minimal makeup. And I almost think the glowy version of this can look more natural on the skin under that circumstance when maybe this is all you're going to have on compared to the regular CC cream. Even though I love that stuff, it's a little more matte on the skin and this kind of gives you this whole natural sheen. And I like that it's not actually glittery, but somehow it does manage to be super duper glowy. It's also got that SPF 50 plus, which is great. You can wear it very minimally, like I said, and just really show off the glow. Or if you decide to do something a little more full coverage with your look, the glow can really be toned down just with powders and concealers in different areas. You know what I'm saying? But this is always the kind of thing I want to grab for when I feel like, okay, my skin's got a little more color to it. I really want to show off the glow. I think this is gorgeous. Also, the staying power is really, really nice for me. Always has been with the It Cosmetics CC Cream products. I've also come across a concealer, guys, that I think is a great little multitasker. If you like the peachy tone, if you like full coverage, and you really try to guard against um, your skin drying out. It's not quite as peachy as Erase Paste, so it's sort of like a fusion of a peachy concealer and a regular concealer. I'm sorry to get so specific about this shade because I know this won't be everyone's perfect shade, but it's working so well for me. It's the 110 Ivory C color, or it also says 01 Beige on here, but it's the Lancome Tante Adol Ultra Wear Camouflage. Little goes a long way with this product. I put it on the innermost corner this whole kind of under eye zone and my my. I love the coverage. I love that this shade happens to be just a hair peachy, which is kind of perfect. It makes me think a little bit of the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye, but not quite as tacky and sticky as that. It's definitely a concealer I like to set at least a little bit, but I've really been loving this stuff and I was getting into it pre-vacation, but then when I took it with me, I was like, yes, this is awesome. Here's another part of my look that I think has been really important lately, um, a powder. I've got several powders that I love. Like, but this Milani Conceal and Perfect powder, so you know they got the Conceal and Perfect foundation, it's very popular. This is the powder, it says Shine Proof Powder. I have it in 03 Natural Light, and I feel like this is Milani's Multitasker powder basically all over again. Um, Multitasker was a great powder foundation, it had really nice coverage, it felt very, very soft to the touch, and this has been a good shade for me because it's maybe just a little deeper than some other powders that I have, and you know. Now, if I go to set my under eye, let's say with the Maybelline Fit Me powder in Fair or the Laura Mercier powder or something that's slightly more brightening on the under eye, this is a really nice powder to put everywhere else. Or a good way to use it is just truly as powder foundation. Like you're maybe not thinking about wearing a liquid foundation at all. You're just going to conceal a few areas and set everything. This is so nice for that. It is mattifying. It can definitely go there coverage wise, but I feel like I've used it enough in both capacities, either to set foundation or or as powder foundation in itself. And it's really delivered in any situation. I think it's definitely prolonged the staying power of my makeup. And as you're gonna see as I continue on, I've got a couple other powders that I have not been so thrilled with. And just a little frame of reference comparison here to another powder I know I talk about a lot, L'Oreal True Match. I feel like this is maybe a bit more coverage than that product has, but a really similar feel and finish on the skin. I have really been into face palettes lately. And a couple I've just been using the heck out of. My Too Faced Natural Face Palette. This was really the gem of this whole collection for me. I mean, I do love some of the lipsticks also, but um, in terms of the new palettes that Too Faced has come out with, they redid Natural Eye again, they redid Natural Matte, and this puppy
Puppy right here. I just, I love what they're doing. They've given you a bronzer. They've given you this kind of mix of bronze and rose type shade here, which I consider a blush. A couple of true blush tones with the mauve and the pink. A couple of highlights as well. This was so fantastic for travel. The container here, the palette is durable as all get out. At first, when I reviewed this, I thought, you know, this bronzer is working for me with kind of borderline fair light skin. But even as I've gotten more sun, I found that bronzer to still be really, really nice. I'm wearing that today. I'm wearing this pink blush, which I think is so fresh. Oh, I just love a light, light dusting of that. You do need to be kind of light-handed, I think, with your blush colors right here because a little bit does go a long way. But I'm generally a build it up slowly kind of gal, so that's fine for me. Um, the highlight shades in here, one is pinky toned and one is more golden. So it's kind of nice to have that option. Although that's going to roll me right into my next topic. Nothing beats this. And <laughs> this glow kit from Anastasia, the sugar glow. Oh my word. When I was talking about the best selling highlights at Ulta in that video where I compared five, spoiler alert if you haven't seen that yet, this one was a major winner for me. I'm wearing Starburst today, but I find every tone in here wearable and unique, and you're getting a lot of product. It's just a tremendous value. As you can see, Butterscotch more golden. Gumdrop has some pinkiness to it. I think it's a beautiful blush topper, and it might look like it's gonna be a glitter frosty veil, but it's not. It really does not look glittery on the skin. There's Gumdrop, a little more coolness to that shade, and then Marshmallow has the warmth and the goldeny tone. These highlighters are just fun. Fun. That's all I can say. Like when you finish your look and you think, okay, it's coming together pretty well. And then you pop one of these on. It's like, yes, this is so good. A few more favorites, guys. Not done yet. Um, here's an eyeliner favorite. I'm so glad I stumbled across this. This was in like a little goodie bag that I got when I went to Houston with Makeup Revolution. It was for the Ulta General Managers Conference. And they gave me this cool little eyeliner pen. And let me tell you, this is long wearing easy to apply, and very, very black. That is a felt tip there at the end. It's super fine, but not so tiny fine that you have to go over and over your line again. But one of the biggest points about this and the thing that I struggle to really hit on with a liquid liner most often is the staying power. Like if it's not going to last, if it's going to be smudging on my outer corner or smearing into my tear duct throughout the day, the liner need not apply. It's got to do that. That's a deal breaker if it can't stay. And this stays so well. And I don't think this claim to be waterproof, but it definitely gets through my days so well. If you like to watch a little bit of this on your hand, like it's not going anywhere. And the intensity is totally there. Like I said, application is easy. Wing liner is very easy with this for me. It caps nice and tightly, which is very important with these pen style liners. And I still really love my Milani 17 hour stay matte. But if you prefer to have something in a pen style applicator. I think this is very handy. Also, a very subtle detail about this. See how it's a little bit thicker right here in the middle? It tapers down at both ends, but I find that thickness like very easy to hold on to. Easy to get a good solid grip with. So if you're an, a liquid eyeliner beginner, this might be a great place to start. I showed this on my Instagram story recently, but the CoverGirl Super Sizer is back in my life again. I mean, this stuff, we're taking it back maybe a year and a half to two years on my channel where I was initially talking about this. The brush is not really impressive at a glance because you're kind of seeing some short bristles and then two sort of flat, almost bald sides to the brush. But what that does is it allows you to get some product on your lashes and then you kind of turn it so the bristles are sweeping it on through. And the end result is, for me, amazing length. Like, it's very, very impressive what this does. And it's really good about holding the curl as well. In comparison, to some other mascaras I've been using lately like Lash Paradise or also It Cosmetics Superhero. I feel like the drying time on this, it takes just a little bit longer to dry, but it's really, really impressive length. So rediscovered favorite. I repurchased it recently and I'm back in love with this. Also, got to tell you about what's been going on on my brows lately. I feel like for weeks and weeks I've been using this Deep Brown from e.l.f. This is their $2, I think it's called Instant Lift maybe or Eye Lift. And this is the Deepest shade I've ever used in this, and something about it, I feel like it's so 
perfect for the tone of my brows, the deep brown color. I think I've tried to get away with lighter shades and they've been okay, workable, fine. But this is a really great retractable brow pencil. It's going to be thicker than a Brow Wiz or a NYX Micro Brow and for me that's okay. I think I can get the job done pretty quickly with this actually. And then you've got the spoolie on the other end. It is normally capped but I lost that somewhere between here and Florida. Just really loving this stuff for the color and the ease of application and also of course the price. And then I had seen um, Lisa J on her Instagram story mentioning this brow stylist boost and set from L'Oreal and this I have in the shade Dark Brunette. And this was something where I'd been sent it in PR but I hadn't used it yet and she was talking about how good it was and I was like, ooh, let me double check and see if I have that. And it is a teeny tiny little thing of a brush here. And this is so great for adding a little boost, a little thickness, um, a little tint to the brows. There's a product sort of like this that I love from Hard Candy. I think it's called Brow Ink or something. They don't make that anymore. So this is that product all over again. A really, really fine brush. And I'll find, I'll fill in my brows, you know, in a pinpointed manner with that pencil and then kind of go back through with this. And the hold is phenomenal with this. It holds so well if you've got unruly brows, kind of thick brows that sort of want to go their own separate way, the little hairs. This really does a good job. And it was also nice on vacation because I felt like if I just wanted something quick, didn't want to spend time slaving over the brows, I'd just sweep some of this through and it'd be fine. Now, I think that's all the favorites. I do have them all listed here, so I'll make sure I don't forget anything. But I got a few products that were misses for me. One big one that I can't stress enough is the spray-on sunscreen that did me wrong and got me all burned. But here's another one, and I know this is a loved product for a lot of people, but for me, I just can't get why it's so special. It's the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Skin Perfecting Powder. I have this in shade one, fair, and um, I just don't know. It, it's a nice textured powder. It is soft to the touch. I don't see what makes this any better than L'Oreal True Match, though. It really doesn't have any sort of, like, awe-inspiring, transformative effect to my skin, like suddenly I look airbrushed and flawless. It's, in fact, maybe a little less coverage than the L'Oreal True Match, and I've, of course, said that the Milani is more coverage than that. So this is more coverage than this one as well. It's mattifying. I've used it in a touch-up sense, and maybe liked it a little better just touching up with it as opposed to actually working it into my makeup application. But it's a pricey product. It gets talked about as though it is just absolutely next level and I'm not quite understanding why. It is nice and soft and smooth, but so are a lot of things out there. I mean, even that uh, LA Colors Mineral Press Powder is tremendous and feels maybe even creamier than this stuff if you really go for that kind of a rich buttery feeling powder. So I don't know. I, enlighten me. Feel free to in the comments section. Here's another powder that I know some people like and I travel with this. I've traveled with this on several occasions because for one reason, it's got the nice little thing that covers up the sifter, so I don't feel like all the powder is going to completely shake out of this thing and get all over my cap and everything else. But this is the Cover FX Perfect Setting Powder, and a lot of people really enjoy this stuff. I've got it in translucent light. I think it most definitely does the job of, like, if you want to use it to set or bake the under eye, it really does the job of taking away a tacky finish, but that's kind of where it ends for me. I don't feel like it adds any extra coverage, and the Laura Mercy a loose powder does, and so does um, my Maybelline Fit Me. I'm wearing that Maybelline Fit Me on the under eye area today. I love the way it looks. Um, I feel like those two also wear really, really well all day long. And this, while yes, it's giving me the proper texture that I want to the skin, and I don't feel like it really over dries me, it just doesn't give me as flawless of a look as those other products do. That Maybelline powder, I tell you, really, really good stuff. Definitely does the job. Here's another thing that I haven't actually watched any reviews on, so so I'm not sure if the internet community is loving this product, but I, generally speaking, do really like the Marc Jacobs eyeshadow palettes that are packaged in this way. These skinny palettes, the black ones, I think have some brilliant color schemes in there. This is the iconic palette in Fantascene, and it's come out with a newer, like, summer collection. And I got it off of Sephora's website, and I thought maybe, just maybe, this is going to be, like, a perfect color scheme. And I've used it quite a few times, and yes, it's pretty, but I'm kind of bored by it. When you look at this shade, 
and then this shade, and then this shade. I mean, we've got like three variations on peach in a palette with only seven colors. I should have maybe realized this more going in, but outside of the peachy shades, your only real statement type color is this one, which is really pretty. It's very pronounced, but I feel myself turning out the same kind of looks over and over again, and I, it's not a knock on the quality because I think the textures of the Marc Jacobs eyeshadows are just tremendous. And there have been some of these iconic palettes, um, particularly just part of the regular line, the black packaging that I think are just dynamite. But this one, I think it's just the color selection. I'm not loving it. In case you were wondering what's on my eyes today, um, it's something new to me that I'm trying. It's from Milani and it's the Everyday Eyes Must Have Metallics. I used a lot of the gold, um, this shade right here. Definitely not favorite status yet because I'm just now playing with it for the first time. But just in case you were wondering, that's what I'm using. And that is it, everyone. I had a fun time catching up with you talking about some of my latest um, makeup fun. And I just want you to know I so appreciate you spending time with me every week, whether it's a makeup video or the vlog. Your complete kindness in the comments section. I'm always in awe and just so thrilled that we have this positive, really uplifting community here on my channel. So thank you guys again, and I will see you next time. Bye!